How's everybody doing today? Alfred Flores, CEO President of New Age Electric. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. We hope 2022 is going to be a lot better than the previous years that we've been through. Okay, so today we want to talk about lighting controls and how we can add custom lighting controls to your database. And I'm going to show you a method to keep them separate from your day-to-day -day material so you can keep track of it you can cross-reference your um, supply houses controls quote and, and that's the main reason why I show everybody you should always do it the way that Acubit intended to do it because there was a specific reason for that is to always keep track uh, track um, basically reference your uh, supplier quotes too and to make sure that your light item prices match up with your supplier house quotes because in my personal opinion when I get quotes I plug in light item pricings for everything uh, for fixtures and controls um, most of the time controls are not light item pricing unless you get something uh, like standalone like uh, like the Lutron Pico system a lot of the times they give you the plates the power packs the, the Pico switches that's all light item pricing you can plug it right in Acubit and don't even have to worry about if the supply quotes um, you know match your estimate or not because you're going to be more confident in how you took it off versus they took it off um, so we're going to jump into this we're going to start with um, and, and this is the way I do it you can do it however you want it but first we want to make sure we're going to put it in the correct um, item database and we're going to start off with uh, wire system devices and you can create anything you want here um, I'm just gonna stick to what they have we're gonna go with low voltage and down here you're gonna see that you can create anything you want and once you put something in then you can start messing with each one of these columns so I'm gonna keep it sim simplistic I'm gonna go with the end light solutions and this is the low voltage uh, end pods and I'm gonna jump over really quick and show you what I'm talking about. So this is um, end lights, end pods. It basically, this is a low voltage switch that's powered uh, by a Cat 5E from a power pack that receives the line voltage. And um, if you're not used to looking up what you're getting from the supply houses for your controls, I highly suggest it. Once you start looking into these, and, and this is how I am, I can remember what these parts and pieces and how it all comes together. So I know like the end light system just by looking at certain part numbers. I know that's an end pod and I need a Cat 5 e cable and I need an MPP16 uh, power pack. And depending on if it's a, uh, a plenum or non-plenum ceiling, I gotta use a Cat 5 e plenum cable uh, and, and so forth. So some of the stuff you know how to create this stuff but the the thing you should and I always recommend you should do it just create an assembly for it you'll never have to go back it's already done some of these um, systems are very popular and they're and they're so popular that they show up probably on one out of the five estimates that you do and why go back and recreate this stuff create an assembly you're good to go and you'll never have to go back Okay, so we know that we have a wall pod, and if we scroll down, they're going to show you certain configurations that you can do. And if you keep going, this is telling you that this is basically they got the RJ45 jack in the back already, so you need a um, Cat 5e cable, and they suggest to only use non booted. Cat 5e cable now that's probably their personal opinion and if you know the booted cables you got the strain relief in the back of it and then it's got like that little hump over the clip and that's so it can't easily be taken out uh, once you put these things in the likelihood of them coming out to be repaired or anything like that is, is very minimum so it's up to you you could do it if you don't want to put the boots on it, it's up to you. But we're going to build it just like they say it is. We're just going to put an RJ45 
on the end and RJ45 on the end of the cable. So we're if you don't have Cat5e cables built in, we'll do that really quick and then we'll just put this out together and then we'll create a, uh, a an assembly in the database in the fixtures and, and I'll, I'll go into that a little later after this. Okay, so we wanna create this. So we're gonna call this specific switch the uh, NPOD DM. So we're gonna jump back in our I'm sorry check back into our database and then we're gonna call this the n uh, pod m and once you do that the available options come over so as you can tell there's no labor in here at all if you want to copy things if you think it's similar totally up to you um, so oh keep in mind I just Put something in here really quick. This is under cabinets. So if you want to put this under switch and plates, um, come back in here really quick. Grab this, hit edit, cut, come in here, switches, and then pa paste it however you wanted to paste it. Now, if you think the labor is about the same as these, you can just highlight these over here, hit control C to copy it. Highlight over here, control, control V to paste it. So now we got our switch in here. Um, we're not going to put anything else in here. We're just going to call it an end pod. We don't want to put material or price codes because of the fact that that's going to come from the supply house and those manufacturers can change it at a moment's notice. At least if you get a kit from the supply house, they can honor it for so many weeks and kind of work with the, with the supply house, uh, the manufacturers. Okay, so we got that. Next, we want to just create a uh, blah 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 the Cat Five E cable. I don't know if they have Cat Five E cables in here. I can check, and we could probably maybe just utilize something in here. Uh, they have some Belden pair cables. Maybe that could be it. They have a two pair, six pair. So we technically need a four pair make this work I'm not really seeing it I could be wrong audio well we'll just say we're gonna copy one of these so we're gonna go into telephone and we need a a four pair you can also hit control C and control V here too. control C and we'll hit control V and we're gonna call this a four pair and we're gonna call the end cat Capitalizer cap 5e cable and then we might as well make the plenum one too just in case if it was a plenum ceiling and we could just put it in parentheses and say plenum um, hour wise you could just leave that alone this not it's your company your database you control what you want to labor um, your, your stuff okay now we need to do our jacks. I don't know, like I said, I don't know if jacks are in here or not, but for the sake of argument, we are just gonna put an RJ45 jack here. Now, uh, before I continue, cable like this, yes, you can get this stuff from trade services and put this in here. I'm gonna go back over really quick and show you some stuff over here. I pulled up some cut sheets. This is a, um, uh, Mohawk and their numbers are right here. This is a not a cat 5e non plenum solution If you want to just do blue cable you can uh, highlight this and then copy it put it into trade services and Copy the price code and then that way when you do your um, extension update it'll, it'll bring it over to whatever today's pricing is um, Right now I am going to go to trade services and I have a jack already ready to go so let me create this really quick in the database and we're just gonna call this an R RJ 45 cat 5e and I'm just gonna call it a plug for right now plug and then I'm just gonna put a labor in here 0.25 and column one, which is probably going to be your uh, competitive bidding. 
all right so we got the cat 5e -E cable and the plug so i'm gonna go back over here really quick and then i am kind of copy this universal price code come back over i'm gonna plug it in the price code section here so that way it comes through and then now i'm gonna come back over i'm gonna copy uh the cat 5e -E part number for blue I'm gonna hit search this should pop right up if not and there you go so I should be the four pair right here uh, last is 323 let me just double check this really quick m56167 on plenum m56167 okay so this is it so here is right here I'll copy this I'm gonna come back over and I'm gonna just put this in the non plenum so that way our pricing and our labor is all done uh, for the plug and the cable. All right, so we got that configured. Now, this is what I do as my company. I put my fixtures and controls together. And you might ask, why do you do that? It doesn't matter. The fact that is that you're going to make a section called lighting controls in here. We're going to call this... lighting controls and then we're gonna create as we go now like I said it doesn't matter it's because the, these are all gonna come together and you're gonna name them as you go it doesn't matter if what we call it the end pod whatever such a case because when we create these and then you go back into your job you you get the name each item you get the control what it's called and everything and that's why I said it's it's always important to keep track of what you're taking off um, because when you go into your extension in your job everything appears on the top in order and you could see that oh I got uh, n pod M I got 50 of these I cross reference the quote come back they say they only have 45 okay am I did I overtake something off or did I mix something up and then you can kind of cross reference your job and try to see where you messed up or maybe the manufacturer just put too many on there whatever the case may be but keep in fact that you can't control what the supply house and manufacturer give you unless you give them specific counts i just they're gonna have to honor that because if they messed up then most of the time they're not gonna um, honor it regardless um it's it's a it's an ongoing battle with the manufacturers it's not the supply house per se it's it's usually whoever the lighting controls are if it's acuity or lutron or crestron whatever the case may be okay enough talking let's go back into this so we want to do an assembly and we're going to call this the end pot switch so you don't have to write anything right here we just want to go back um and we're gonna we're gonna do a, a shortcut we're gonna hit common assemblies we're going to go to switches and then we are going to use an assembly EMT and we could just do metal stud and don't use a half inch. I don't think that's going to be big enough for cat, like at least one or two cat five E's go with at least a three quarter inch and we'll do that. All right. So you notice that if you pick that assembly, this carries over. So what we want to do is we're going to want to race these plates and the device itself. We want to erase the wire and the ground. You do not need ground wires for low voltage system. That article does not apply um, to the low voltage in um, Chicago 2018. So you do not have to ground that box. And the rest of the stuff, set screws, that's fine. So we want to put the stuff in here now. Now the thing, the difference is between when you're in database and in a job, you get to choose what order these are. So in my opinion, you always keep the main device at number one. So I'm just going to keep this right here and I'm going to go find the newly created switch we did, which is switches, which is low voltage, which is plates. And then towards the bottom, we should have the end pod. All right. You can hit control C and then copy this over and then that'll be an end pod and you can just call it like end pod switch. It really doesn't matter and I'll show you why when we take it off in a job really quick. End pod switch. We want to go to the wire now. So we're going to go to the cable. 
And I gotta remember where I even had this at. Oh, look at this. They did, they did have some here. Huh. I did not see that. Um, but let's keep it to the way we did. So... Belden... Okay, there was a pair of cables. Yeah, telephone. Unshield this. So these are the ones we created. So if you don't want to use what they have, you want to use your own, no problem with that. We want to do the cap IV cable and when RJ45, uh, make sure you're doing counts for everything so nothing's multiplying. Um, everything should be fine right here. So we're going to say that cable, we're going to add a little slack to that. So we'll put like uh, 20 feet. Totally up to you, just letting you know how to do it. If you want to put the plug on each end back at the power pack or you just want to do it here totally up to you I'm just gonna make it simplistic enough so I don't uh, to make this realistic there's gonna be a plug on each end so we got the switch and uh, there is one thing we're missing now the end pod wall push buttons I don't recall if they come with a plate or not and if they don't make sure you add it off the top of my head I can't remember and I actually do have a box in front of me for my last demonstration. And I don't... Oh, yeah. So they actually do come with the one plate. Now, you really want to be um, real nitpicky about this. You can make an end pod wall plate and have no material on it. So that way you're not picking up all these plates. Even though some of these decor plates could be... 90 cents 95 cents and you even if you had 100 but it's 100 bucks it's not gonna kill you but you're you're giving it your best bid and you're you're doing it uh, uh true to what the assembly is um so you can do that too you could go back to item days really quick i know i might be kind of going overboard on this but i'm a stickler and this is I, how i like the the bit stuff and i'm gonna put plates and i'm gonna put the um uh, end pod the core plate and I'm just gonna throw a labor in here of uh, I'll just put 0.04 I'll match what they got and there's gonna be no material on this I believe you could put um, no cost on here so you know and we'll go back into fixtures light controls and we're gonna add the plate right behind this now our system devices Low voltage. Uh, I forgot where I put it at. Was it plates here? There we go. Alright, so now we have the plates. So now we have a complete end pod switch. And if you and so you know when you're assembling you take the stuff off. This is just an uh on and off raise and lower switch. And you could be you can go always go back to your take uh, uh your cut sheets on this and kind of see all the different types of switches you can do 2p 2p dx 4p and look up these part numbers and see what they specifically do because you might need like if you got two different zones uh, you might need a calf iv cable going in and then coming back out or the power pack their daisy chain a certain way so I always look up these cut sheets to kind of see what uh, each switch does and power pack does as well all right we are going to go back over here and we're going to say these are all done. Satisfied with that? All right, I'm going to pause it really quick and we're going to jump into a bid and then take it off and show you the advantage of doing this. Okay, we're back. All right, so we are in a job now and within our takeoff, our fixtures, we have now we are now going to create lighting controls in here so disregard if it just says fixtures doesn't matter we know that anything lighting and lighting controls is going to be buried in here so we'll do a quick takeoff and we're going to say uh, the drawings call out this switch is called a um you know dimmer uh switch d you know they they the engineers and, and they like doing that they try to abbreviate things so we'll just call it switch D and we know switch D is a raise and lower end pod uh, switch. So we'll say switch D. Now you got our newly lighting control section done. Double click that. Double click that. And we are satisfied with this. And then the switch D is already called here. So hit OK. 
right click and finish so there's your switch D so your switch D designation is going to appear in top of the designation I'm sorry the extension when it's done so we're gonna double click switch D and we're gonna say these are uh, 50 of those and this will bring over to the switches over here and now we go in extension and you see all your daily material is at the bottom and then your actual device is right here on the top um, like I said before, I like to keep track of everything, uh, fixtures and switches, all that quoted material stuff is going to be all the way on the top. All the stuff that I know, I know I'm going to buy separately, um, and and you know do a buyout separately, is going to be all below here. So switches, gear, um, any kind of heating, uh, you know things start things of, of that nature will will not be bundled up in here. Uh, that's the importance of doing that. You can, so he, here's the other thing. And now this goes back until um, if the job is over budget. Now you already bid this job and they came back and said, hey, you had a pretty good number. Um, we want to go with you. We're going to award you the contract. Oh, great. Okay. Where's my contract? Oh, well, well, the owner said he's over budget. Is there anything you can do to bring down the cost of this job? Here we go. <laughs> so now we got to figure a way to bring down the cost. A couple of ways you can do it. You can go back to the supply house, say supply house, talk to manufacturers, or hey, get me a VE lighting package. Okay, we do the VE lighting package. But if you know lighting controls well enough, all the material that's in here we can substitute that for something like a wireless solution if the owner's okay with it not lasting maybe 10 years from now so that's another thing you can do now you could create an alternate right and then we could just be uh i'm gonna say i want to create and copy this copy it over hit paste I want to modify now if you had a a Lutron Pico switch now you could come in here and just take off the um, NPod device yourself or create a new one and just call it the Lutron NPod switch so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this I don't need it and I'm just going to call this a Lutron Pico switch. And this is because a lot of people are, are using this. It's it's not that expensive. And it takes away all the conduit and wire associated with it. Um, so, you know, let's just... I'm just going to put the MPOD switch in here again and delete this. So if you don't know the Lutron Pico switch, there are no back boxes, wires, screws, anything. The kit that you get from them is the Pico switch itself, the wall plate, and the two dry raw screws that go in it. Um, and you're done. The power pack and stuff like that, that labor is matched with the power pack that you've already probably gotten the job. So we're going to put these in here. And we're hit finish. And then we're going to say there's 50 locations just like this, right? Now this is going to be your alternate to them. Your wiring devices, we're going to right click this. And if you don't know how to do this, I have a, a previous tutorial on um, uh, change, change orders and whatnot. You can come in here and do a reverse takeoff. And what this does is changes it to orange. Now, if you come in here now, almost nearly everything will be negative. So the only thing that won't be negative is... The thing that's positive, which is the Lutron Pico switch and the labor. So you know that you're giving back 94 hours and X amount of dollars. And then just keep in mind, there's no money in here. That's why it's important. If they give you line item prices, you can plug the line item pricing in here. Come in your quoted material, negative that out. And then in your final price, we'll give you... Um, you know, negative 11,000. So you're giving them back a credit of that. And then you can control how much you're giving back to. You don't, 
you know, you thought you were going to make $25,000, you went, maybe you went low on it, like only 5%, you don't want to give back all your profit because now the job is, you're going to make less money on it, it's not worth your while no more. So always keep that in mind too. So I know I went a little bit overboard. I usually do that because I think of certain scenarios in real life scenarios that that benefit people when you watch this. So um, any questions on creating your own custom lighting controls? Once again, it's just, I'm just showing you the controls itself. There's power packs, there's uh, uh, the brains. Like if you got uh, let's say, uh, Lutron, you got the QSN nodes, stuff like that. You, you know, you can build all this stuff in there and don't have to ever build it again. Uh, your chief estimator, or if you're in charge, build it all now. You don't have to build it later. Every five to 10 years, they're always coming up with something new. It, 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 wiring it up and labor may be different. But you can always copy this stuff and then alter the labor based on what the cut sheets say. And then you're good to go. I mean, it, it, it probably couldn't take you more than an hour or two to do something like that. Every five years, it's worth it, especially if you have a team of you know five to ten estimators under you. You don't have to go back and do this again for another five or ten years. But not only that, you're building a powerful database for your team so they're not building that. And, and, you know, you can move on to the next estimate. Um, and, you know, any questions, comments, leave them below. Shoot me an email. And everybody have a great New Year's. And talk again. Thank you.